Okay, so I'm going to be reading a bunch of modern day revelations. Um, this is too long to do in one recording, so I'll just do a little bit at a time, but I'll read them here, and I want to share them on the program, so. For did I, the Lord, not send mine only begotten unto the Jews, saith the Lord? And did they not reject him who has a appointed my firstborn by me, saith the Father. And did they not have their high priest also, even as ye, O Ephraim? So these are revelations to the LDS Church, not from the LDS Church. For it is written, for it, I'm sorry, for it is that mine only begotten, and that one mighty and strong, have they not been twin brethren from before the foundation of the world, saith the Lord of the whole earth? So the reason the Father is saying this is because there is the office of the morning star, which our Father and God the Creator holds, and then you have the bright morning star who is Jesus or Yeshua, and he is the first apostle or witness of the Father, and Messiah ben Joseph, or God the witness, is the second witness or apostle of the brother uh, of the Father, and he is mighty and strong. But that there, for the first presidency of this earth under the direction of Jehovah our Elohim, are God the Creator, who is Michael, who is mighty and strong, God the Redeemer who is the first witness and apostle of the Father, who is mighty and strong, and God the witness, who is the second witness or apostle of the Father, who is mighty and strong. And then there are 12 others who are mighty and strong for this earth as well. And then under them stand the noble and great ones who are like the 70s. Let's see here. And it is that that one shall stand to judge Ephraim, and one Judah, and they are one be with me, my two witnesses, before the foundation of the world, saith the Father. And which is greater? For out of the mouth of these two witnesses shall every word be established, saith the Lord God, who is the Father of both heaven and earth. And thus it is that that one mighty and strong should be sent unto thee, that ye be tested even in these things, as the Jews by mine only begotten, to prove you, saith the Lord, whether ye will be obedient unto me through my spirit, saith the Lord. For it is that no man knoweth my will, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Let's see here. Okay, and then this is another one. One to ye Latter-day Saints, for I prophesy that unless you repent and return for the first work to the first works of the restoration, that the time is not far distant that you shall be destroyed by the God of Israel in an earthquake and an overflowing scourge, which shall annihilate your much touted holy ground. For the wrath of that mighty one, who I am a witness, is gathering against you that you cannot escape unless it is that you are rebaptized by the authority of the higher priesthood and the apostleship which I have been given by the Father and the Son who have sent me. And it is that when my mighty ones return, the heavens shall wage war against the earth, and the wicked, yea, the proud, and them that rejoice in wickedness, shall be cut off, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, saith the Lord God. For the heavens are mighty, and they who come shall burn them up, saith the Lord God of hosts. For that war fought before the world was made shall continue upon the earth, that all shall know with an astounding affirma affirmation throughout all eternity that there is none who standeth beside the might and power and glory of the Holy One of Jacob, who it is that speak through the mouth, O Israel, through my mouth, O Israel, as anciently. Therefore, woe, woe unto they, saith the Lord, 
they are that say, All is well in Zion, yea, that crieth, All is well, and who hearkeneth unto the precepts of men, or rely upon the arm of flesh. For cursed are all they that rely on the arm of flesh, or who hearkeneth unto the precepts of men, save their precepts, shall be given by the power of the Holy Ghost. For ye shall perish, and the punishment of the false prophet, saith the Lord, shall be given as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him, even that of a damned soul, saith the Lord God, even so. Amen. Okay, and this one has to do with the revelation received in July of 2013, where I was commanded to sever the ordinances of all the holy people, which prophecy is found in Daniel chapter 12, where the man clothed in linen scatters the power or priesthood of all the holy people, which are the LDS church and all of its offshoots. This is the word of the Lord unto you who are of Ephraim. Because the Lord, the Lord of the whole earth, who is the Father, gives you one gift, need not suppose that he cannot give another. For his work, neither his word is yet finished, that he cannot cause more to be written. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established, saith the Lord of the whole earth. Wherefore he was formed by mine hand, that I, the Lord your God, the Father, should give unto you another gift, for having given the children of men one gift, which is Jesus Christ, ye need not suppose that I, the Lord your God, cannot give unto, unto men another gift, which is the second witness, or God the witness, the Holy Ghost, Messiah ben Joseph, um, the Davidic servant, he has, I have many names. For he, the second witness, is the man like unto Moses. For he also is in the similitude and very likeness of mine only begotten. For if you receive him not, then ye shall not be received by me, saith the Father. For I, the Father, did cause it to be written that there is none other name given than Jesus, who is mine only begotten Son. And this pertaineth unto the Jews. For it was a trial unto them to believe in Jesus of Nazareth, even as it is a trial unto you, O ye Gentiles, to believe these things. For I, the Lord God, am no respecter of persons. Therefore, why is it, O ye saints of Israel, that you require the gateway to be brought unto you and narrow even unto them. For ye, even ye, garnish the, and praise the name of mine only begotten Son. And yet, when I the Father do send another gift unto you, you cry blasphemy, even as did the Jews. Are ye better than they? I say unto you, nay. For ye in your ignorance as to your righteousness, and your sloth do lift up your hill against him who was, with, who was as him, Jesus, even mine only begotten in power, yea, before the world was made, for he it was also that was with me from the beginning, saith the Father. For I am I the Lord God of Israel, and not Judah only, saith the Lord, and ye, O Ephraim, shall receive him whom I have sent, saith the Lord, or ye shall be cut off. For he whom I am sent, even my servant, is that one mighty and strong who should come unto you, O Israel, as mine only begotten did come even unto the Jews. Therefore, see, O Israel, that that Thing, or that that which did come upon the Jews come not also upon you to the uttermost. And he's speaking of the desolation of the temple in 70, 69 and 70 AD. For he was also with me from the beginning, and I have given that he should speak words, yea, eternal world, words for the salvation of the children of men as my second witness. For out of the mouth of two or three witnesses 
shall every word be established, saith the Lord of the whole earth, even the Father. Thus saith the Lord, can a bitter fruit or can a bitter fountain bring forth good water, or can a man being evil do that which is good? For it is, saith the Lord, that by their fruits ye shall know them. For the fruits of my spirit, saith the Lord, do they not testify of me, even Jesus Christ, whom ye have hitherto not known? And that which testifieth of me is not that which testifieth of me, is it not by me, saith the Lord God of Israel? For I am he that doth speak unto thee through the medium of mine appointment, as in times of old, O Israel, who have been scattered among the nations. Now is the time, saith the Lord, for thy regathering unto mine anointed, as in times of old, that I, the Lord God, shall remember thee, O Israel, and lead thee by power such has not been seen before or since, yea, even from Babylon, with an outstretched arm as Moses, which is fallen. That gathering place in 2016, God told me to gather to Emory County, Utah, and then when time gets gets to be too dangerous, that God has given us a place that is south of here in the wilderness, northwest of Lake Powell in the Escalante National Park area. And uh, if you're watching sometimes in the videos or in the, uh, the podcasts on Blog Talk Radio, I've got pictures and stuff that pop up on the screen. And if you see the picture of the man standing in the water in the beautiful place that is the location of the uh, of where we will gather when the whole world is burning around us so anyway <clears throat> therefore that which is sent of me doth not conflict and contradict my words and my purposes which I have spoken through the mouths of others of my my servants the prophets even Joseph Smith and others concerning Israel. And anything which contradicteth these my servants who have gone before is of the devil and his fault, saith the Lord God of Israel. Therefore, that which is sent by me, saith the Lord, testifieth of me in my words and my purposes, which change not. But they, the false prophets, do change my laws and ordinances to become friends with the world and to become popular. By this key ye may, detect, ye may detect the false prophets and apostles. For I, the Lord, will not vary from that which I have said, but am the same in all ages of the world. And the plan of salvation hath it not been exactly the same? For that which saved Abraham, even the law thereof, must save ye, O ye stiff-naked and unbelieving generation, which are, are for are ye not also the same in thy unbelief before me, O foolish man and O foolish woman? And it is that the evil one desired through false administrators who have hijacked my church and led many astray to contradict former revelation, which even the angels of glory are forbidden, neither can they do, saith the Lord. And this is why I'm always talking about Babylonian businessmen hijacking the church. This is where I get that from. False administrators who have hijacked my church and led many to contradict med, uh, former revelations. Continuing on. And anything which doth not teach men these things, even to believe in me and my words exactly as I have spoken them through the mouth of my servants, the prophets of Israel, yea, that which also doth not edify and thereby testify of me the life of the world and the life thereof, even Jesus of Nazareth, who speaketh unto thee, O man, is of the devil, or is of the evil one, and is darkness and produces despair. And my word, is it not also quick and powerful to the cutting asunder of both joint and marrow? Therefore it is given unto you to judge that ye may know of me even the author and finisher of your faith, 
whom the world in its wickedness has not known, even Jesus of Nazareth. And if ye call good evil and evil good, ye are no better than them that cast me out, even as a thief and a robber, and as a vagabond without a home. For did I not cause it to be written that the foxes have holes in the bird's nest? But it is that but it was that the Son of Man had not where even to lay his head, even I, the firstborn and most intelligent of all the spirits, which were begotten by the Father thereof. And thus it was a requirement that I, even I, Jesus Christ, descended below all things, even that my people, the Jews, become my persecutors, that I might do the will of him who sent me, who is greater than I, even the Father, that none might have excuse concerning the difficulty of the way at that great and last day. Even so I drunk of that bitter cup, and I did cry mightily unto him who sent me, that this cup, cup might pass even from me. Yet I, the Lord God, bowed my head, and suffered that his will, who is mightier than I, yea, even my Father, who revealed himself unto me in that day, that even his will should be done, even the shedding of my blood and great drops of <clears throat> upon the ground upon which men stand to this, this day. So Jesus actually has seen the Father. He was, he was given the fullness of the priesthood by the Father, and he is the first witness of the Father, even as I have seen the Father and embraced him. That happened with Jesus too. It's not in the scriptures, but it did happen. Continuing. And I will that all, rich and poor, come unto me through my servants and drink from that well of living water spoken of. And he that receiveth my servants receiveth me, saith the Lord God of Israel. Remember, all powers and conferrals, priesthoods or offices are hereby done away in me, and one, even one remaineth, that you must receive your salvation and ordinances and conferrals from him who is appointed, and any counsel or the effects thereof are hereby annulled, saith the Lord, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God, and swear with an oath, and will not repent, saith the Lord, that ye shall not enter into my rest, except it be through my servant, whom I have appointed. And... That happened in July of 2013 when I was commanded by the Father to fulfill Daniel chapter 12 wherein I lifted my hands to the air, to the square, after the manner of the Melchizedek priesthood, which I do hold, and uh, the fullness of the priesthood, which I have received of the Father, directly from the laying on of hands of the Father, to sever the ordinances and the power or priesthood of all the holy people. And this right here, remember all powers and conferrals, priesthoods or offices are hereby done away in me, and one, even one remain, that you may receive your salvation in ordinances and conferrals from him who is appointed in any council or the effects thereof are hereby annulled. So it's a hard reset basically. It's setting the house of God in order. Continuing. And when I, the Lord God, did speak unto my servant Joseph Smith, that I should, that it should be that no one should be appointed to receive revelations and commandments except my servant Joseph, I, the Lord, did provide that he should abide in me, and that as long as he should abide in me, saith the Lord, then it was that he should be the one empowered to speak in my name as moved upon by the Holy Ghost. And my servant Joseph, saith the Lord, did abide un in me even unto the end. And how much greater, saith the Lord, is my servant Joseph in mine eyes than those whom ye sustain as your presidencies. For the powers of the priesthood are inseparably connected with the powers of heaven and may not be controlled nor handled except upon the principles of righteousness, saith the Lord God. And if it should be that the presidencies of my church, saith the Lord, should fall into, into transgression, 
then they also shall not have power to speak in my name for the welfare and benefit of my saints or the members which comprise my church, saith the Lord. For it is not written, for is it not written that I, the Lord your God, even Jesus of Nazareth, did say while in my power among the Jews, if thine eye which seeth for thee, him that is appointed to watch over thee, to show thee light, becomes a transgressor and offend thee, to pluck him out. And it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have having two eyes and be cast into hellfire. And did I not speak unto my servant Joseph concerning the manuscript of the book, which he had been called upon to translate, that although a man may have many revelations, and have power to do many mighty works. Yet if he boasts in his own strength, and sets at naught the counsels of God, and follows after the dictates of his own will and carnal desires, he must fall and incur the vengeance of a just God upon him. And how much greater, saith the Lord, was my servant Joseph than those whom ye in your perverse and stiff-necked generation sustain as your presidents. For even Lucifer, was he not given authority before the world was made? And did I, the Father, not cause him to be cast out, even though he be my son? And if I, the Father of heaven and earth, spared not them who are deceived from before the foundation of the world, do ye imagine in your your hearts, O vain man, that I will spare thee, even if it should be that all perish? Yea, even though it should be easier that a hand be cut off, yet it be better to retain heaven with one hand than to be cast into the church, uh, into be cast out with two, saith the Lord. And this hath been a law throughout all time and also throughout all eternity, among them who are gods and the sons of God, even Elohim. Are ye, ye stiff-necked and perverse generation, different than they in your iniquity? For all my servants, the prophets, have been first cast out by your churches and synagogues, O Israel, and then stoned and crucified and persecuted when it was that they dared, when when moved upon by the Holy Ghost, to speak against them who ye lift up as your presidencies who have gone contrary to the covenants which I, the Lord God, did make with their fathers, even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it was that Paul was smitten by them when speaking concerning their high priest, as well as mine only begotten, as well as mine only begotten in the flesh, saith the Father. Was he not smitten across the mouth by the guard for impertinence? And so it is with you, O ye ignorant, haughty, and stiff-necked generation concerning him who was received before the foundation of the world, that he should come unto thee, O Ephraim, to save and redeem thee by power which hath not been seen since the days of my son Enoch, who shall return with ten thousand of the saints in this day, saith the Lord God. For it is that my servant... Is he not one mighty and strong to thy salvation, O Ephraim? From the chains of the bondsmen, which doth afflict thee night and day. And is not thy slavery, O Ephraim, worse than that of Pharaoh? For it is that the elements shall move hither and thither at his command in that day, when when it is that I, the Lord God of Jacob, shall speak from his mouth. With thunder in that day, saith the Lord God. But ye must come unto me, even thy God, O Israel. And it is that that in this day I, the Lord God, will extend mine arm for thy deliverance from Babylon, O Ephraim, as prophesied by my servant, who was one of the greatest of my servants to walk the earth. And as I said concerning thy high priest, Were not my servants Peter, James, and John, were they not put into prison for preaching sedition against the high priest O Ephraim, 
Are ye better than the Jews, my chosen? For were they not the sons of Abraham like unto thee, O Ephraim? And was not him who was reserved also smitten like unto him of old by his home teacher, in that the police of his day did disregard these things as anciently, O Ephraim? And this thing also was for preaching sedition against thy high priest, O Ephraim, who is likened to Caiaphas, who sitteth in the temple of God, as was written by my servant Paul in the second chapter of the book to the letter of, to the Thessalonians in that day, saith the Lord God. And was it not that this should come to pass before the day of mine advent as prophesied? by my servant that it should come in this generation that now standeth upon the earth and is not that son of perdition that sitteth revealed by these words of mine saith the Lord for thou and thy wickedness O Ephraim have exceeded anything concerning that which I the Lord God have spoken concerning any other people for it is in this idolatry because you worship your prophets and your leaders, that ye shall be smitten from generation to generation if ye repent not, and come unto me through him who was appointed unto thee. Even for this purpose was he sent, as was Jesus unto the Jews. Are ye different than they, O Ephraim? For ye imagine up in thine heart that if we had, ye had lived in the days of the prophets and apostles, that were with me in my power in that day, that ye would not have partaken with that generation of the innocent blood. And yet ye have not lifted up, and yet have ye not lifted up your hands against him who was sent as mine only begotten, reserved for thy salvation from before the foundation of the world, O Ephraim. And is not mine adversary the prince of this world, for mine adversary, saith the Lord, did buy up armies and navies, Pharisees, Sadducees, high priests, presidents of priesthood, that all that he may reign with blood and horror on this earth. And how is it that ye, and how is it that ye are different than they, O ye stiff-necked and perverse generation, who have also been deceived? For it hath been a requirement of mine anointed in all ages of the world to descend below all things. And how are these things possible if it is that he does not descend below the generation in which he lives? For woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, and blessed are you when all men shall revile against you falsely for my name's sake. For so did their fathers unto the prophets who were sent even unto them, Ephraim. And did I not, and did not I, the Lord God, say through the mouth of my servant, Woe unto him who is at ease in Zion, yea, woe unto him who is saith, All is well, yea, all is well, Zion prospereth. And are not these thy words at this time, saith the Lord God of battles and burnings? Yea, what meanest thou, O man? Was not my servant Nephi a prophet also, when I, the Lord God, did move, did move upon him by the power of my spirit, which is as a consuming fire, which did cause even his mighty frame that it should quake from the power thereof? For he... Even he did prophesy of thee, O Ephraim, or ye that call yourselves Latter-day Saints, even at this time. For it is that I, the Lord God, have known the end from the beginning, even before the foundation of the world have I known thee. Therefore repent, repent, lest unhappily ye find yourself in that torment which shall consume thee as a consuming fire, O ye rebellious children, who are full of iniquity. For hath it not been written, that by the weak and simple and the despised things of the earth, that I, the Lord God, would thrash the nations by the power of my spirit? And are ye not, 
a nation unto me, O Ephraim, that ye should come out of her, even Babylon, and take thy place among the nations as a queen that thou art, O Ephraim, Ephraim, my beloved, from before the foundation of the world. For thou, even thou art my beloved, saith the Lord God of Israel. For was it, was it not that Enoch was slow of speech, even that the people did hate him? It did not my servant Moses stutter, and this because of his meekness before my people? And was not my servant but a boy when he did slay Goliath? And was not my only begotten considered to be the least in the kingdom of heaven by them that who thrust him out and would not feed him, that he wandered alone in the desert without friend among men, being tormented because of the exquisite truth and power which was his to wield for the salvation of mankind. And they did crucify him, O man. And thus the warfare which, which began before the foundation of the earth, or of the world, Hath it not been, been continued here, O man, against the holy priesthood of the Son of God, and shall not be ended until one or the other is bound and driven from off the earth? But them who did serve me, saith the Lord, shall receive eternal life. But them who do serve me, saith the Lord, shall receive eternal life with the Father and the sons and daughters of God. But them who hate me, saith the Lord, shall receive eternal death and shall dwell with the devil and his sons for all eternity, if it should be that they will repent, not repent and be obedient unto mine ordinances, saith the Lord. And their worm, di worm dieth not, and their torment is as a lake of fire and brimstone, and the end thereof no man knoweth save he shall be made partaker thereof. And this key, saith the Lord, I give unto thee, O man, that ye may be able to detect and discern any influence, whether it be from that evil one or by my spirit, saith the Lord. And that which causeth your souls to expand and to believe in the sons of God, ye may know with a perfect knowledge that it is sent by the gift and power of God for the salvation of the sons and daughters of men. And on the contrawise, that which doth cause pain and distress of soul and despair, and that which causes you, O man, to turn away from the God that made you is not of me, saith the Lord, but is of that evil one. So I'm going to end it at that. We're at 32 minutes into this reading as it is, and I have to go to work. So thank you for listening. I'll try to get part two up probably sometime this week. Okay, all right. Part two of Revelations. For he desireth your destruction, O man. And if ye are ensnared by him, ye must perish, saith the Lord. And this despair and lack of hope cometh because of your iniquity and unbelief and produceth death, both spiritually and physically, saith the Lord. Therefore, if the words of a man edify and give hope and light and life, then ye may know that it is of God. But if a man's words cause despair and take away hope and faith in God, then ye may know that it is not of me, saith the Lord. And that, that light which filleth the immensity of space is the same light which quickeneth your understanding, saith the Lord, and produceth from me even the author therefrom, or proceedeth from me even the author thereof. And those bodies which are celestial, which are filled with light, comprehendeth all things, and they are God's, for all things are theirs, whether in life or death, for all power is given unto them who be gods, even the sons and daughters of God. A man, not the woman, is the crown of creation, saith the Lord God, and she shall submit unto me even through the man, even the Lord God, the mightiest of all, or she shall be removed out of her place, and another woman more worthy of my glory shall stand beside the man 
whom I, the Lord, have created in my own image. And that spirit which leadeth the woman to assert herself independent of man, whom I have formed after mine own image. The glory of my form cannot be withstood by the earth in its present form. Is that devil spoken of, <coughs> even the enemy of all, that is that which is right and just and good? And unless she shall free herself from this delusion, taught even at this time among the children of men, which is contrary to that order among the sons and daughters of God, which order is called patriarchal, which is the order which exists among them who are in heaven. She shall be destroyed by me, saith the Lord God of burnings and might and honor. <clears throat> For I will not be mocked by the ignorant and foolish of the children of men, who know not my ways, nor do they know my thoughts, saith the Lord, uh, Lord God. For my ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. And my thoughts are not your thoughts, O man and O woman, who art in rebellion even in these and other things at this present time. And unless ye repent of these false teachers, ye shall be re uh, destroyed, saith the Lord. <clears throat> Any man who receives a prophet, <clears throat> whether he be of God or of another spirit, should seek to know whether that prophet be of God or some other spirit. Okay, this is my notes that I have inserted here. This is not part of the revelation, but it's mine. If he treats a false prophet lightly, he would also treat the true one lightly. If, he, if that man who receives the prophet hear the words of that prophet and seeks to know by the fruits of that prophet, and then after he spends time sincerely striving to know if that prophet be of God or of any other, he shall go in prayer after he has studied the matter out. And if that prophet be of God, the spirit will burn within him, and he may know the fruit of love and peace that will come unto his heart, that he may, may know. But if that prophet be false or fallen, the spirit will withdraw from him and leave him if he believes the false prophet. And when the spirit of anxiety and depression and darkness come upon him, that he may know the thing that he believed is wrong. But belief is a key, and withholding judgment until God reveals to you truth is also key. That man who will judge and will not believe will have a harder time getting the answer. God says, if you lack wisdom, ask me, but not to be a double, uh, to be double-minded. He says, it's, says to study it out, and he says to take no thought save only to pray, and that we must study it out, then ask. <clears throat> All right, continuing on with the revelation. For I, even I, am a glorified and exalted man, saith the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I have not changed, nor will I, but I am the same yesterday, today, and forever, saith the Lord God of Israel. And Judah, for I, even I, did appear unto the patriarchs of old, and did show unto them also my glory. And as I said concerning the sons and daughters of God, they speak, and it is done. And they move through the immensity of space and time at will. And they move, saith the Lord, faster than thought. And they possess all power, might, and intelligence, and nothing can withstand them at their presence all things flee away unless, in, unless quickened by them and are consumed from might, the might of their glory, of which the sun at noonday is typical in comparison. Yea, even the earth upon which thou standest, O man, shall be consumed at their appearance unto thee at the last day. For did not my servant behold us in that day that we spake unto him from out of the heavens, and did he not behold our glory, his frame being quickened by us, that he could withstand our presence, which in the might thereof the tongue of men cannot form. So this is 
their witness of my experience with them in 2003. And thus he, even he, is an eyewitness of our glory as them of old, for he stood in our presence, and we did converse with him face to face in our own tongue. And he, too, shall assume his rightful place among the sons and daughters of God, for we have proved him, saith the Lord. For he was also with us from the beginning, and was ordained by us that he should come that he should come unto thee, O man, at this time, and he should testify unto thee that he has seen for himself as them which are fabled among men, even them of old. For ye shall also be partakers with of life with us, yea, even that life which surpasseth all understanding, as soon as ye are sanctified through the words which shall which we shall speak unto thee, O man, through the mouth of our anointed prophet, even he who is the one who should come unto thee, O man, that thou shouldest partake with us of that life and intelligence and power which the mind of man cannot comprehend in glory and might and majesty and power thereof. And it is the desire of that evil one that he should that ye should be kept from the knowledge of these things, yea, that ye be kept in darkness, death, and despair. And the operations of that evil one are detected through the medium of mine anointed, even my servant, who is that one mighty and strong prophesied that he should come unto thee. For it is that that old serpent, the devil, transformeth himself into an angel of light, and his ministers, yea, of that which is known as Christianity, which doctrines are an abomination in my sight, saith the Lord, into the, uh, unto the ministers in righteousness, saith the Lord, into ministers of righteousness, that the whole world lieth and groaneth even now in sin. And sin is a rebellion against light and truth and knowledge and is darkness. And these things are detected through the medium of, medium of my appointment. And thus, O oh man, ye are helpless against these things, except ye be obedient unto them who are empowered by me to detect and rebuke these things, that ye be edified and comforted, and have life which shall swell your souls, that ye expand in light and truth and life. And this promise I give unto you, that ye also shall behold my glory and enter into my presence through the medium of mine appointment, which is after the order of Melchizedek, saith the Lord. For he hath come unto thee, that ye shall be redeemed up into my presence as anciently. And if ye are obedient unto me through him whom I, the Lord God, have chosen, ye shall have an escape, and ye shall be sheltered as a hen doth shelter her chickens under her wings, even from the buffetings of Satan. And it is that those who go on in their rebellion against mine anointed shall receive of the second death, and if they repent, pre, if they repent not, which, de, which death of the spirit, which is a total annihilation thereof, back to its native element from which it was begotten in that day, that I did create it from the intelligence which is eternal. For the devil desire that you be a partaker with him of these things. Therefore, that which produceth light and stability and faith, and sound mind, and courage, and hope, and peace, and love, and joy, and power, and glory, and honor, and might, and intelligence is of me, even the Father thereof. And that which produces death, and the effects thereof, which are despair, lack of hope, hope, and doubtings, and anguish of soul, and fear, and troubles, and tremblings, and buffetings, and uneasiness of mind, and heart, and soul, and pain, and verily anything which doth not edify is not of me, and is of darkness, saith the Lord God, the Lord God of Israel. 
and is of the devil, even the author of death and the effects thereof, which are this despair and lack of hope and anguish and soul and fear and troubles and tremblings and buffetings and uneasiness of mind, of heart and soul. These things, are they not of that evil one, saith the Lord? For by their fruits ye shall know them, and uneasy loud emotions and exclamations and shoutings are not of me, saith the Lord. But righteous rebuke and anger against uncleanliness is of me. For mine only begotten was he not full of the rebuke of the Lord. And did they not crucify him because of these things? Therefore, if ye are rebuked by me, receive it with joy. For thus are ye accounted worthy to be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord God. For what father among you correcteth not his children whom he loveth? And this is his anxiety for their welfare as his own, that they perish not. Therefore, if ye are rebuked by him, receive it with gladness, for it shall work upon thy soul for the, thy good, if ye receive it without anger and railings, saith the Lord. And ye, may, and ye shall be my children, even sons and daughters of the Most High God. But if ye, but if it so be that ye go on in your rebellion against me, saith the Lord, and mine anointed, then ye shall be thrust down into that hell spoken of, and ye shall not escape even the buffetings of Satan until that which is known as the second resurrection." And the chains thereof, even hell, do they not bind your minds and soul, souls even now unto destruction, saith the Lord. And a little child Satan hath no power over. Therefore ye must become his little ch children, and be rebaptized for the remission of sins by mine anointed, even my servant, and those who are ordained by him, unto this power and none else. For straight is the gate, and truly narrow is the way, saith the Lord God. And he that will harden his heart against thee, these things, and go on in the blindness of his mind, must perish, saith the Lord, must perish with them who are wise and prudent and lifted up in the pride and cares of the world, even your merchants and your doctors and your lawyers and your scribes and your Pharisees and your teachers, and your politicians, and all those who would uphold that which is known as Babylon the Great, who are mine enemies, saith the Lord, who are pillars which uphold the kingdom of this world, which are of the devil, and who did tempt mine only begotten, and say unto him, All these are kingdoms, all these are kingdoms, and they are mine, and who did crucify mine only begotten in that day, because of his so-called offense against their order, to, and to which my people Israel are enslaved, even Zion, and trodden under the foot, underfoot by them at this time, saith the Lord God of Israel. For would not the wicked and ignorant of the children of men trod, under, trod underfoot the very God of Israel, if in their power? And for this reason they shall be ground even unto powder by mine warriors who are full of honor, saith the Lord. For is thy slavery, O, pe o my people, not worse than that of Pharaoh? And did I not prophesy these things through the mouth of my servant Moses in the book of Deuteronomy in that day? And these servants of the world, if they retreat not from their stand shall suffer the second death who shall withstand for who shall withstand the Holy One of Israel who is, co con is a consuming fire to those who are mine enemies as in the days of Pharaoh and this hath been the, my gospel saith the Lord in all ages of the world upon, upon which thou standest and now as I said concerning your presidency saith the Lord a speaking of the presidencies of the LDS Church. But really, it, it can apply to, well, 
He is speaking of the uh, LDS church here specifically. That if it should be that they are, are wholly departed from my counsel, that if it should be that they should wholly depart from my counsels unto them in the hardness of their heart and the blindness of their minds, which thing hath afflicted almost all of your authorities from the time of Joseph Smith, that ye shall not have power to appoint another in the stead thereof. So they... They've corrupted themselves and they've been rejected and they don't have the power to to appoint anybody because they have had their authority rejected completely, 100%. And they lost it a long time ago in part, but they completely lost it in July, uh, July 15th of 2013, completely when God told me to sever the ordinances of all the holy people on the earth. And I didn't know that that was a prophecy in Daniel chapter 12 until a month or two later. And I never even thought of that before. But when he told me to do, to use the authority he gave me to sever the ordinances or the power of all the holy people, which is the priesthood, um, I said, why do you want me to do this? And he said, because if they will not accept you as my witness, I will not accept them. And I am their witness. I have seen them face to face in the flesh, in the flesh, both our Father and our Redeemer. And I have knelt before the Father, and he did place his physical resurrected hands on my physical head in the temple at the top of Mount Vashel, which is the house, the mountain, the mountain of the house of, of God, or the it, it's the temple, the temple that I was to, uh, that I was directed to go to after I was taken to the valley. Um, when I climbed the mountain, I went in the temple of the Father, and that's where I saw the Father and the Son face to face, and. They gave me the authority and the keys of the priesthood and the kingdom thereof, all of the keys. And they told me um, to be a servant on the earth and, and, you know, continue to learn and grow. And that was in 2003. And then in 2013, God said, kneel before me and ask me who you are. And when I asked him who I am, I was taken up in the spirit and I saw a vision of the pre-existence and I saw a, a lifted platform and on the platform I saw three thrones who were right next to each other and I saw the Father, God the Creator, or Michael, who became Adam, standing in the middle and to his right side I saw Yeshua or Jesus Christ or God the Redeemer and to his left side, I saw Hillel, or who the Latins call Lucifer, who is God the witness, who is the bearer of light and truth. And I saw that Lucifer rebelled because he felt like he should be the first witness, not the second witness. And because of his pride and his arrogance, he was cast out. And he had his name and title stripped from him, and he became Hasatan, or Satan, or the accuser, which he was, which he became. And I saw many others cast out with them, and they became his arch demons and his demons. And then I saw the Father and the Son go down among they who were mighty and strong. Now, there were 12 who were mighty and strong before the rebellion, and about half of us remained. And I saw the Father and the Son choose me from among them to take the place of the witness of the Father and the Son, or the bearer of light and truth. That's who I am. I saw the Father and the Son go among the noble and great ones and choose from among them those to fill the vacancies in the quorum of mighty and strong ones, which were 12 in front of the Father, the Son, and the Witness, who are also mighty and strong for this earth.
And whether I've been on the earth many times or this one time, Mark Lichtenwalter is not my true name. That's the name I have on the earth. But this is a character that I am playing in this stage of life. And whether I have had many names or not, I am the witness of the Father and the Son. And I am among you at this time. And these revelations are about me. And they're to you, who are the children of the house of Ephraim, to call you to repentance. For there is an end of their priesthood, and if they should cause themselves to be severed from the heavens, and it, hold on. Well, I'm going to reread this. And now, as I said concerning your presidency, saith the Lord, that if it should be that they should wholly depart from my counsels unto them, in the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, which thing hath afflicted almost all of your authorities from the time of Joseph Smith, that they should not have power to appoint another in, in the stead thereof. And for, their, for there is an end of their priesthood, and if they should ca- cause themselves to be severed from the heavens, And it was that my, even my servant Joseph did plead long and hard unto me concerning the manuscript, in the which I did grant unto him that, that which did prove to be a snare and a curse instead of a blessing, saith the Lord. And in this day, saith the Lord, them who ye unlawfully sustain as your presidencies did also plead long and hard, even as my servant Joseph for that which was not right. And I, the Lord God, did grant that which should be a snare even unto their souls, even in these things, yea, even unto their destruction. And how much greater was my servant Joseph than the ye, than, than them whom ye, sh- ye sustain as your presidency, saith the Lord. For did I, the Lord God, not speak through the mouth of my servant, as he is known among men, Ezekiel, that if a prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, saith the Lord, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. In in the which they do live, saith the Lord, deliciously with Babylon the great, and seek even the praise and the honors of the world. For this record is the four, this is recorded in the 14th book of the chapter of the book of Ezekiel, ninth verse. For did I, the Lord God, not also grant unto Israel through Samuel my servant, who saw much affliction because of the wickedness of the children of Israel in his day, that they also should have a king like unto other nations, which was the desire of their hearts? And did this not also not prove to be a snare and a curse unto them? For how oft was Israel led astray through the wickedness of her kings? Anyway, I've got to um, take a break from this. So that was part two of the revelations. And like, I'm never going to get done with these revelations because they are really, really long. And there's a whole bunch of them. So I'm just working on uh, it a, a little bit of time as I can, as I have time to. Of course, I work. I have a farm. I've got kids. I've got a house that's got to be fixed. Um, but I'm waiting in the car right now for my wife to do the thing that she needs to do. So I thought I would take some time and actually create a video and also create uh, a sound clip for the radio show. So um, I haven't created a video for the first part. Um, I will try to when I have time. And, but I already rec- I recorded the clip for the radio show for the first part. So 
anyway, I'll try to get some more done. And then I'll share them on the radio program as I get them done. So thank you for listening. This is part three of Modern Revolution. Utah Statehood. Did not Utah, saith the Lord, desire to become a state like unto all other states? And for this cause ye did forsake my law, even that of Abraham, O ye Latter-day Saints, yea, even that which ye, O ye Gentiles, call polygamy, even as Israel hath forsaken my statutes and my judgments in all ages of the world, and have even gone whoring after strange gods. Now, real quick, I know there's a group of people who want to, like, deny that polygamy is a thing, but real quick, (laughs) um, Joseph Smith wrote down the revelation of, uh, for plural celestial marriage, which is found in DNC section 132, um, Some people think that Brigham Young is the one that penned this revelation. But uh, William Law and his wife Jane Law and many others swore in legal affidavits and published them in the Nauvoo Expositor in June of 1844, which stated... Uh, well, William Law and Jane Law stated that Hiram in April of 1844 read them the revelation on polygamy, and they were very opposed to polygamy and did not like that doctrine and other doctrines, but that's what the novel expositor is all about. And they, they swore that Hiram read them that revelation in April of 1844. Many years later, when Brigham took the saints out west, William Law saw a copy of the revelation that Brigham had presented, and that revelation, according to him, um, when Hiram read it, it was only a couple of pages long, but when Brigham presented the revelation, there was like eight or nine pages Uh, which shows that Brigham actually added many things to that revelation. Now, if he were a prophet, I don't think it would be a problem, but the problem is Doctrine and Covenants section 124, when Jesus tells them to build the temple for the Most High to come dwell therein, that he might restore that which was lost unto you, or that which was taken away, even the fullness of the priesthood. Um, He also says around verse 45, that uh, if you don't do what I say, you'll be rejected as a church with your dead. Now, the Nauvoo Temple was only starting, uh, they were only starting to build the second story of the Nauvoo Temple three and a half years after the revelation was given by Joseph Smith in 1841. So they never finished it in the required time. And in fact, they did finish the outside part of the the temple, but the inside was never finished. And for those of you who say that it was, the Shekinah glory of God that rested upon the Kirtland Temple and also upon uh, Solomon's Temple and also upon the tabernacle in the wilderness which shows that the temple was accepted by God, never came upon Nauvoo, and that the Most High never restored the fullness of the priesthood, and that Jesus himself never came to that temple, and neither did any angel ever come to that temple. And Jesus said, If you do what I say, uh, you will not be removed from your place. But the fact of the matter was that they were removed from their place. Also, Um, Jesus uh, promises to restore the times and seasons which are the Moedim of Jehovah that didn't happen and Jesus said if if you're obedient in building this temple 
uh, you or I will begin to give you many revel. It says something to the effect of this will be the beginning of revelations, but we also know that that did not happen. Jesus said, if they are not obedient, uh, and <clears throat> instead of blessings, I receive cursings, wrath, indignation. And he says, you'll be rejected as a church with your dead, which is exactly what happened. Um, I had an individual claim that the fullness of the priesthood was restored in the Kirtland Temple in 1836. But the problem with that was, or is, that the revelation of section 124 was received in January of 1841, where Jesus says, build a temple for the Most High to dwell therein, that he, the Father, might restore that which was lost unto you, or that which was taken away in the fullness of the priesthood. So it wasn't restored in the Kirtland Temple in 1836. This is just bad apologetics by people in the church who don't like the fact that Jesus did reject the church with their dead. Um, also, Brigham Young claimed to receive the fullness of the priesthood from Joseph Smith in the red brick store. But then the problem with that argument is the father never restored it to Joseph Smith. So the fact of the matter is the church was rejected with their dead. And Jesus said, all they who hinder this work in building the temple will be cursed to the third and fourth generation which was between 120 to 160 years would have been the third and fourth generation. From the time Lyman White stated that in a conference talk that the church had been rejected, uh, Joseph did not correct him because Joseph understood the uh, what had happened. Um, all the way out to 160 years was 2003, and that's when I saw the Father and the Son face to face and received the keys of the kingdom and the priesthood and the church and all of the things. And that's when I was sealed up under the Father and received my um, calling and election made sure or eternal life and became the one man on the earth to be sealed to the Father. And through the law of adoption, you must be sealed to me. And that's all part of the setting in order, which uh, no man can do except for uh, he has that, uh, those sealing ordinances done and can uh, issue out those sealing ordinances. But anyway, so um, Brigham Young couldn't change the revelation or add to it. He had no authority to do what he did. Um which is sad anyway but um but the fact of the matter is that joseph did receive the revelation on polygamy it may have been added to by brigham young but the fact of the matter is the novel expositor actually talks about that revelation so we know that it existed before brigham young made it up as these people want to claim also i know by revelation and by vision the importance of plural sealings, that um, every man must be sealed to a woman, and every woman must be sealed to a man who is elect, who is the elect of God, each of them, in order to receive their exaltation. And the fact that there are more females who qualify for these higher blessings than males is why God allows plural celestial marriage. So um, I had an individual say, well, what about in China where there's more men than women? It doesn't matter about the ratio of men to women. It it matters about the ratio of those who qualify for exaltation. That's the ratios that I'm talking about. So because there are many more females who qualify for exaltation... God allows them to be sealed to fewer men because there were fewer men who qualify for exaltation. Anyway, continuing on. And your presidencies, saith the Lord, have hearkened unto the voices of them whom I did not send. They did bow unto the clamor that those who call themselves Latter-day Saints should become should become in abominations there is 
they're of like unto all other nations who in their wis- wisdom know not God and his righteous decrees concerning nations and their boundaries and habitations which were before set by me and count the counsels of the sons of God before the world was made even by them saith the Lord God of Israel <clears throat> So the next part is called In the Days of Pharaoh. And it is for this reason that I, the Lord God of Israel, have raised up my servant, that he shall call down that which shall destroy mine enemies, even in times of old, yea, even in, even that Elijah, my son. So Elijah is actually a name and a title as well. And ye shall hearken unto his words, saith the Lord, unto my people who are called Latter-day Saints, or ye shall be cut off, yea, forever, and be cast into the fire, saith the Lord God, who is, is mighty to the consuming of those who fight against me, as in the days of Pharaoh. And this is one of the reasons why it makes me angry. And upset that nobody will listen to me because I know exactly who I am and I know that people who reject me are going to receive certain punishment for that because God uh, told me if you don't accept me as your as his witness then he won't accept you because I actually am the third member of the Godhead I know that that sounds crazy and you know what I would rather I wish that I didn't have to do this. I wish that I didn't have to share these things. I hate it. Everybody would think, well, if you're a member of the Godhead, wouldn't that be a great thing? Actually, it does have its benefits. But to be a member of the Godhead in mortality, especially the witness or the redeemer, it, it's not easy. Because everybody attacks you and they call you um, all kinds of names and they want to mar my reputation with their slander and their libel. And I just want to live my life. God told me to be bold in my witness and so I am and I try to teach the best that I can. But I just want to have my family and do my job and work my farm and have my animals and love my kids and my wife. And I like walking among all the different uh, groups of Christianity and, and the restoration as well. And I love it when people don't know who I am. So the reason I attend um, a Pentecostal church is because the focus isn't on me. The focus is on God, and that's what I want it to be on. Even if you know who I am, I want you to focus on God, not me. I don't want anything from you. But um, when Moroni came to Joseph Smith, and he said that the man of Acts chapter uh, 2, verses 22 and 23 is Christ, but the day had not yet come when he would be rejected by his people, well, if you go to that scripture, it says it talks about the man like unto Moses, and all they who will not hear his voice will be cut off from among the people, which goes right along with this revelation that I'm reading to you today. A lot of people listen to me, and a lot of people will believe me, but then they'll never do anything about it. And at last, they are, they were, are, they go off to the left hand and fall and it I sad and it drives me insane because I just want you to I don't want you to have to go through that I don't want anybody to have to go through that and so like I feel like I'm in a 
a catch-22. If I say the things that God has asked me to say, then I get, I get, my reputation becomes marred. I lose jobs. Um, and not to mention the time it takes to do these programs, you know, and uh, with the exception of one individual, like I don't receive anything monetary for any of this. I don't uh, mo monetize my videos. I don't try to make money on any of this. There's one guy um, who receives a disability benefit and he makes very little money a month and he sends me about $30, $30 a month for tithing. And I've asked him not to do this and he argues with me and tells me God told him to do it and he's going to do it. And, you know, and I appreciate that. Um, there is a revelation that does talk about supporting me so that I can do this work. And maybe it's just my pride, but I don't want anybody to support me. When I was homeless and walking on the streets, I never begged for money. There was a time when I had eaten for days and I was trying to do everything I could to think of ways to earn money, like going to labor services where I could uh, do day labor or something. And this guy walked up to me and he just gave me $20. Now, I was at a workforce uh, place looking for jobs and I was clean, um, but I had no money for food. I had no money for gas. I was actually living in my car in St. Petersburg, Florida. So I was really you know, wary about where I went to. But this guy comes up to me and he gives me 20 bucks. And he said, Jesus told me to give this to you. And I about broke down into tears because it had been so long since I had had anything to eat. And I made that $20 last. Um, two chicken sandwiches at Wendy's a day was $2. And that's what I would live on. And so I made it stretch out until I was able to find more work. But even then, I didn't want anybody's help. I wanted to work for myself. And I wanted to support myself. So maybe it's just my pride. That and I hate, absolutely hate people who make money off the gospel. Um, I appreciate uh, Rick Bennett. And I appreciate his work that he does at Gospel Tangents. But the fact that he merchandises the gospel drives me up the wall. And that problem with the mainstream LDS church is they've figured out how to merchandise the gospel. they figured out how to make billions on God. And that angers me as well. And anyone who does that, like... Um, the guy who does sort of Jehovah Ministries. I really used to like to listen to him. I can't hardly stand him anymore because he's so arrogant. But um, he makes about three thousand, four thousand dollars a month doing his teachings on on the internet. People send him money, and he doesn't have a a real job. All he does is make these videos. And he lives off the back of tithing. And I have a huge problem with that. That's priestcraft. So that's why I don't ask for any money. Um, and that's why I don't want my friend David's money. But he insists that God told him to send me a tithe. So he sends me about $30 a month. So anyway, none shall stay him, saith the Lord, for he is a warrior of my house who was mighty and also strong to the confounding of Lucifer before the world was made, and who shall fight you in the fury and might of the Spirit of the Lord of hosts, even shall he be as a bull and a gnat full of the fury of the Lord against them who live in the fear of the world. Next topic is ye are led astray. 
Yea, even now, O Israel, ye are led astray through them whom ye lift in, in the praise thereof, even more than kings, and you and whom you worship in the temple of God as God. Which thing hath provoked me in my wrath, saith the Lord, that I have that I have decreed that ye shall be destroyed, saith the Lord, except ye shall repent and come unto me through him whom I have appointed. So this prophet worship that's going on is an abomination to God. If you were to worship me, it would be an abomination to the Father. And in fact, you shouldn't even worship Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, or Yeshua, always pointed to the Father and said, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. We point to the Father. We do not want you to worship us. We do not want you to worship men, any man in the flesh, or a woman for that matter. We want you to turn to God and God alone. These men who lead this church, the mainstream uh, Brighamite LDS Church in Salt Lake City, Utah, people will justify to themselves and say, we're not worshiping them. Well, who's the one that sets the definition? It's not you, it's God. And if he says you're worshiping them as a people, then that's exactly what you're doing, which is sad because there is a curse that comes along with trusting in the flesh and putting somebody above God in the temple of God, which is exactly what Second Thessalonians is talking about. The man of sin, the son of perdition, is a man who sits in the temple of God and he puts himself above all that is called of God because he has the authority to change the church on the earth. And he is not doing it because he is commanded to by the Father. He is doing it because he is a wicked, evil uh, man who is adulterous in the fact that he should have been the bride of Christ, but he becomes a whore of Babylon, going chasing off after capitalism and greed and wealth. They ignore the scripture. It is not given for one man to own that which is above another. Wherefore, the whole world lies in sin. And if you will be a Zion people, you must be equal in all things, which all has to be followed in order for Zion to be redeemed, which they don't care about. These men do not care about. They care about the wealth and popularity with the world and how much money and control they can create and make. And it's sad. And because you believe the lie that they are prophets, seers, and revelators, you receive strong delusion that you all might be damned because you did not love the truth. But it's even worse than damnation. It's even worse. Because all they who will not hear my voice will be cut off from among the people. And these things have I, the Lord God, spoken concerning him who was reserved as a vessel of wrath, even as Pharaoh, from before the foundation of the world, whom ye unrighteously revere as a type of the Son of God. And let me just say, I hold it back. I, when I, um, when I was first called to the ministry, there were a couple of people who uh, contended to me in my face and told me I was a heretic and all the things that they said and I cursed them. One immediately the next day had sores all over his whole body 